Welcome back. After break, um, we are now going to study Chapter 7, Kingdom Parables. Okay? So please don't uh, switch off saying, oh, I've... Uh, you switch off your mind, I mean, saying, oh, I know all of these Kingdom Parables. I've learned it from Sunday school days. Um, yes, we've all learned it, but, uh, we, are, you know, we look at it in a fresh perspective. So if you listen to me the first 15 minutes, you will understand why I'm saying it's a fresh perspective. And then you will be excited as I am excited to study the kingdom parables. Okay. So when Jesus came to the earth, uh, he was teaching people about the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. And uh, when he wanted to teach them about the kingdom of God and kingdom of heaven, how did he speak to them? in parables okay to sp he spoke to them in parables and so he wanted to actually communicate what through the parables to the parables what did jesus want to communicate okay how the kingdom of god is what it looks uh, what is the characteristics of the kingdom of god okay what else heavenly things in earthly meaning Heavenly things in an earthly meaning. Yes, thank you, Gertrude. Anything else? Hidden truths, right? Basically hidden to communicate hidden truths concerning his kingdom. Okay. So when we're looking at uh, studying or examining these parables, we're trying to understand the truths that Jesus wants to communicate to us. So parables basically reveal mysteries or hidden truths concerning his kingdom. Okay. So things that are hidden from time beginning or even before the foundations of the world, mysteries that God wants to reveal the truth concerning his kingdom. He is revealing them through the parables. Okay. So before we look at a few parables, let's turn to John chapter 3 verses 9 to 13. Just lay a foundation before we explore kingdom parables. So can one of you please read John chapter 3 verses 9 to 13, please? Jesus is uh, having a conversation with Nicodemus. Okay. And uh, he's explaining to him the need to be what? What does Nicodemus' discussion with Jesus? Eternal life, the need to be born again. Okay. So Jesus is explaining to him the need to be born again. And he used something from our world, okay, that is of natural birth, to tell Nicodemus something about the spirit realm or the spirit world or the, about the spirit and about the need to be born from above. Okay, are you understanding? So Jesus is talking about, you know, something from Nicodemus' world or our world about natural birth. And he is using that to explain something about the spirit that you need to be born from above. And look at in verse um, 9, you know, um, Nicodemus says, you know, how can these things be? So he's not able to basically understand when Jesus is trying to explain to him some mystery, some truth about the spirit realm using the earthly things. So look at what uh, uh, Jesus says in verses 10 to 13. Can somebody read that please? You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus. And do you not understand these things? I tell you the truth. We speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen. But still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the Son, the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Okay, so Nicodemus says, you know, I can't understand what you are saying, Jesus. I can't understand. So Jesus says, Hey, I've talked to you about what? I've talked to you about earthly things and you cannot understand me. You can't follow me. What will you do if I talk about heavenly things? How are you going to understand it? And then Jesus says, I'm the only one who can tell you about the heavenly things. Why is Jesus the only one who can say about heavenly things? 
He's only one who's come from heaven. Okay, what else? He's only one who's come down from heaven to earth. Okay, what else? He says, in fact, I'm in heaven. That means Jesus is saying, although he's physically here on earth, but spirit in his spirit man, he's connected always with the Father. Okay, so he's saying, hey, I am the only one who can tell you about heavenly things, about the unseen kingdom. Okay, the unseen heavenly kingdom. So here, Jesus had a challenge in his communication, right? He had to communicate to people like you and me about the unseen realities, things about the kingdom, the world that he comes from. And sometimes when he is sharing these very things of his, uh, you know, of our own world, we are not able to understand, right? And so Jesus is saying, hey, I'm sharing things from your own world and you're not able to understand. Then how will you understand if I'm trying to share the things from my world, from where I have come from, from the unseen realities? So Jesus had to do something to bridge this gap, to bridge this gap of how people can understand the unseen realities and also understand it in the context of what is here natural and what is seen by people here on earth. So that is where the whole concept of parables come in. Now you're able to understand how the whole context of parables comes in. And what Jesus began to do is he started using stories from our world to unveil the mysteries of his world or using the stories from our world to teach us the mysteries about his world. And that is what parables are. They're stories from our world, and all these are not from in your textbook, so if you want to take it down, you can. Okay. So what parables are, they're, they're stories from our world that helps us to see into and get an understanding of things concerning the kingdom of God. Okay. So many times when Jesus was speaking parables, he would say, this is what the kingdom of heaven is like, or this is what the kingdom of God is like. And then he would tell us something from our world with the intent that we get an understanding of the unseen re realities of his world. Are you able to understand? Yes. Okay. So uh, with that introduction, now we will look at, um, you know, um, Matthew chapter 13, which lists many parables. Um, but we will just, uh, you know, again, laying the foundation for the parables. We look at verses 10 to 17. So can uh, we read that the disciples came to Jesus and said, why do you speak to them in parables? And so he answered and look at what he says. Can somebody read was Matthew chapter 13 was 11 to 17, please. He answered and said to them, because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. For whoever has to him more will be given and he will have abundance. But whoever does not have even what he has will be taken away from him. Therefore, I speak to him in parables, because seeing they do not see, and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. And in them, the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled which says, Hearing you will hear and shall not understand, and seeing you will see and not perceive. For the hearts of this people have grown dull. Their ears are hard of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears lest they should understand with their hearts and turn, so that, so that I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For assuredly I say to you, that many prophets and righteous men desired to see what you see, and did not see it, and to hear but you, what you hear, and did not hear it. Amen. So disciples came to Jesus and said, Why are you speaking to us in parables? So why are you speaking to the people in parables. And what does Jesus say? It has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. Meaning, he's telling the disciples, God has given you disciples the grace to know the mysteries of the kingdom. Okay. That is why when everybody was trying to figure out, you know, uh, who Jesus is, you know, 
Some said that he is um, John the Baptist. Some says he is Elijah. But the disciples were able to say who Jesus was. They said, you are the Christ. Why? Because it was revealed to them by the Father. So it was given to the disciples to know this hidden truth of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Just like God the Father revealed to the disciples that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Okay, the same way he's, Jesus is saying, hey, to you disciples, it's been given, you know, the, uh, the grace, it's given the opportunity to know the hidden truths of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But he said, you know, for the general public, the people, the crowd that come and listen to me, they have eyes, but they cannot see. They have ears, but they cannot hear. And their heart, they cannot understand the mysteries of the kingdom. So to bridge the gap for them to understand the mysteries of the kingdom, in order for me to communicate the mysteries of the kingdom to them, here is what I'm doing. I'm speaking to them in parables. So he's giving an answer to why he's speaking to them in parables. Because the grace of God is given to the disciples to know the mysteries of the kingdom, but not to the common people, not to the crowd. And that is why Jesus is saying, they have eyes, they cannot see, ears cannot hear, their eyes cannot, their hearts cannot perceive. So I'm speaking to them in parables so that they can understand the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Okay. So, uh, you know, he's saying I'm um, taking stories from their world to help them to see things in my world. That is the heavenly realm. That's why I'm using parables. But in that process of giving an explanation to his disciples, Jesus also said something. Look at what he says. He says, now this is how it works. Whoever has more, more will be given to him and he will have abundance. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. So why is Jesus saying this in this context? So he's saying, hey, if you have you are going to be given more. That means he's telling the disciples, what do they have? What do they have? Grace. What do they have? Grace. Grace of God. The grace of God to know what? The mysteries of the kingdom the of God. The mysteries of the kingdom of God. Yes, thank you, Lucy. Yes, they have the grace of God to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. So for those who have, more will be given. There will be given abundance. But those who have little and they're not doing anything about it, they will even lose the little that they have. So here is something very, very important that we need, sorry, we need to understand about the kingdom of God. Okay, what is this important thing? Now you've got the revelation, right? You have the revelation in your hand. It's in the book, okay, in the Bible, the Holy Scriptures. And all that is concerning in the context of understanding the kingdom of God, you've got the revelation. But if you're going for more, saying, God, I have this, you know, your holy scripture in my hand, but I want to understand it more in a more deeper way. If you are going for it more, then God is going to give you abundance. There's going to be abundance of revelation that will be revealed to you. But if you're just taking this Bible and saying, hey, it's just a Bible I'll carry to church or just read it in the morning as a ritual just to say I finish. But at the end of the day or the middle of the day, you ask, what do you read today in your Bible reading portion? You forget, you know, you're doing it just as a ritual. But if you're doing that something as to receive revelation, knowing the deeper truths of God, that means he's saying, Jesus is saying that you will have abundance. But if you don't do anything with the little that God has given you, you've got little revelation, you've got the word of God, but you're not doing anything little, you risk losing out on the little that you even have. And you risk even losing or getting more. Are they able to understand? Okay. So concerning the revelation about the mysteries of the kingdom of God, we must take it very, very seriously. If you're going to go for more of the mysteries, then you will have abundance. You're not saying, God, I read this parable in the morning in my daily devotion, but I understand, okay, this the sower is, um, you know, God and the seeds are, 
know the word of God and the, 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 the ground is, you know, the people that are listening to and that rock, the thorns and everything I know is, you know, things that are choking people from listening to the word of God. But you think, God, what is a deeper mystery, revelation, the truth about the kingdom of God that you want to reveal to me? Show me, God. Speak to me. Reveal it to me. So when you go after more, you will have more abundance. That's why when you listen to some people's sermons, when I listen to Pastor Ashish's sermons, I say, oh my gosh, I never thought about this. No, I'm listening to other men and women of God. I never thought of it this way. Why did they receive it? Because they're going deeper into more of the truths and the revelation of the word of God. Okay. So when you go into more, you will receive more. The other thing that Jesus said is, he said, hey, listen, if I can speak in parables and get these people to understand, the common people, the common crowd whose eyes are closed, ears are, you know, uh, they have ears but cannot hear, their hearts cannot perceive. He says, if I speak to them in parables and get them to understand what I am saying, that means I, you know, get them to get past their blind eyes, their deaf ears and their hearts by using parables, then I can get them to, you know, uh, what is going to happen to them. So he says, I can bring them to a point, you know, where I can bring them to a point of repentance, to salvation, to a point where they can experience my healing, experience my work, experience my power, and experience everything that I want to give them. So that is why I'm speaking to people in parables. So parables is not just Jesus trying to talk about the kingdom of God and you know, reveal something about the kingdom of God. He's actually revealing the deeper mysteries and the truth about the kingdom of God. And why is he speaking to them in parables? Because they have eyes, they cannot see, ears, but cannot hear. And so Jesus is saying, when I speak to them in parables, stories from their world, which reveal the deeper truths and mysteries of my world that I come from, then it will cause them to do work. What? It will cause them to repent, to receive salvation. It will cause them to experience healing and also experience them to walk in a greater a manifestation of the glory of God. So he says, this is the point why I'm speaking to them in parables. So when you get an understanding of the mysteries of God, it's basically going to, when you understand the mysteries of God, the deeper revelations and truths in the parables, it going, it's going to open your life to the working of God. That is what it's going to do. It's not going to say, oh, I read, read another parable. I understood the story. Nice story. Jesus is very beautiful, creatively uses these stories. Very nice. You know, or in when we were in children's church, we would learn the parable. We will color it. And we were very happy that we colored everything and, you know, finish the story. But the point is we need to get an understanding about the mysteries of God. And when you understand the mysteries of God, the deeper truths in these parables, it will open your life to the working of God. That is what Jesus is saying. So if you're reading these parables in your daily devotions, you're meditating on it, it has to do some working of God in your life. Because that is what Jesus is saying. He's saying by the understanding these mysteries, Understanding these secret truths, you are going to understand or you're going to enter into the work that God can do in your life. Okay, so all of us here are pursuing the work of God, but we don't want to invest in understanding the mysteries. So we need to get the right order. What is the right order? You pursue the mysteries of God. Then you, when you pursue the mysteries of God, you get an understanding of the mysteries of God. And when you get an understanding of the mysteries of God, it opens your life to the saving, healing, delivering work of God in our lives. Amen. So now can you see the greater picture of what these parables are? Not just beautiful stories, but these stories are actually when you pursue the mysteries of God, you get an understanding of the mysteries that opens your life to the saving, healing, delivering work of God in your life. Okay. And uh, just as continuation of our introduction, look at what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 13 and 35. Can somebody read that? Matthew chapter 13, verse 34 and 35. All these things Jesus spoke to the multitude 
multitude in parables and without a parable he did not speak to them that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet saying i will open a mouth in parables i will utter things kept secret from the foundation of the world amen, amen. so what is jesus saying he's saying he's speaking in parables and when he's speaking in parables what is he actually fulfilling prophecy yes okay he's he is fulfilling a prophecy but what we need to also see is that these these parables are now unveiling to us things that are hidden from the time from the time beginning from the foundation of the world so are you excited to study parables because when you're studying these parables it's actually what is it doing is not just telling you a nice story but it's actually revealing to us or unveiling what is unveiling means removing the veil the cover okay of things that were hidden from time from the time beginning from the foundation of the world so within every parable whether it's a small parable or a big parable within every parable is a hidden truth which is not revealed from the time beginning but jesus revealed it when he spoke that parable so is it exciting to study the parables yes so as we study the parables i want to challenge you okay that you know many of us will say yes i heard these parables you know these are nice stories but we need to look at these parables as your avenue of getting a grip on the unseen realities or of understanding the mysteries of god i'll repeat that again when we are studying these parables you know i want to want us to look at these parables as your avenue of getting a grip on the unseen realities of understanding the mysteries of god okay so if you will on purpose examine these parables and say god what are you telling me through this story what are you telling me through this parable and then you know he will reveal to you the unseen mysteries and you say god i want to get a grip of those ministries i want to uh, mysteries i want to get a grip of the truth that has been hidden since the foundation of the world okay and when you will or you pray like this god will open your eyes so we can pray like the psalmist prays god open my eyes and my ears and my heart to understand and to receive these mysteries okay that i will know i will receive them and these mysteries will begin to work in my life will do the supernatural in my life will cause me to turn will cause me to transform will cause me to repent you know and something inside me is going to change so i'm believing that when we study this parables it's not just because we have to study chapter 7 but i'm believing that even as we study this chapter it's going to cause me to transform change repent turn and you know experience the saving work of god in my life amen So that is the intent that I want us to go through with these parables to receive an understanding of those mysteries so then you can experience the work of God in our life. Can we all do that? Yes. So when you come in uh, next class also pray and come like this so that we can all receive the um the mysteries of God. So then nobody will be sleepy or nobody will just uh, a 10 class for the sake of it but also will be listening okay so one of the first parables um yeah like the uh, i wanted to say the psalm is said you know god open my eyes to see the unseen truths in your word i don't know which psalm that is god open my eyes to see the the truths in your word right the psalmist prays that right so we can also pray that and uh, we can also do that in our lives okay now there are many parables that jesus talked and communicated to us we will just look at a few this morning okay uh, and then we'll continue next class okay um so the first parable that he communicated to his disciple which one was that anyone knows which is the pa- first parable ha huh? the sower and the seed the parable of the kingdom okay 
So the sower and the word of God, and we read this in Matthew chapter 13, Mark chapter 4, and Luke chapter 8. Okay. So then Jesus shares this parable. He talks this parable. And he shares it with the crowd, the people that are there. Then his disciples come and ask him quietly in private, please explain this parable to us. So Jesus then explains the parable to his disciples. Look at what he says in Matthew chapter 13, verses 18 to 23. Can somebody read? Shall I, sister? Yes, go ahead, Lucy. Thank you. Therefore, hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is he who received seed by the wayside. But he who received the seed on stony places, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has not no root in himself, but endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. Now he who received seed among the thorns is he who hears the word. And the case of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becomes unfruitful. But he who received seed on the good ground is he who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears bears fruit and produces some of hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. This is the word of God. Amen. Thank you, Lucy. So here, you know, Jesus is explaining the parable and he's revealing something about the kingdom of God. And so he's using a familiar story, you know, that is there because all around you see only farmers you know, who are working in their fields, plowing their fields, sowing their seeds. And so he uses a very familiar thing that is happening in their world to explain a, 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 a truth about the unseen kingdom of God. Okay. So the parable has to do with the word of the kingdom. Okay. The seed is the word of the kingdom. Okay. What is the word of the kingdom? What is the word of the kingdom? Well, the seed is the word of the kingdom. But when we say the word of the kingdom, what does it mean? The word of the kingdom means what? Whose words it is? Yeah, it's the words of the king, who's the king of the kingdom. That means the word is what the king has, of the kingdom has spoken. Okay, It has to do with God's word or the king of the kingdom's word, what he has spoken. So when the king wants to do his work, what does he do? He speaks. Yes, he releases the word of his kingdom. Okay. And when he releases the word of the kingdom, what happens? What is his intent when he releases the word of the kingdom? Is what is his intent his plan when he speaks the word when the king of the kingdom speaks the word what is his intent what is his plan to happen to be established yes it he wants it to be established he wants it to fall on hearts which is the ground right so when the king of the kingdom speaks his word he wants to do something in his kingdom what does he do he releases his word and when he releases his word what is his plan and his intent his plan and his intent is that word goes and falls on the ground now your ground is which is what is the ground the heart yes you know so heart is the ground so the king of the kingdom releases the word and he wants his word to fall on people's heart so that it can bear fruit it can fulfill the purpose for which he has spoken. But Jesus says, but I want you to understand a couple of things. There are some things that will hinder the word from affecting your life. What is the first thing can hinder? First thing is, sorry, if the word is stolen. Okay. So here Jesus is saying, hey, the, as a king, the king can speak his word into your life. But there are some things that are affecting what he is speaking 
to come to pass in your life. And what are those things? First, he says, the birds of the air will come and take it away. So he says, Satan comes and takes away the word. Now, Satan is our enemy, okay? And he wants to come and take away that word, okay? He does not want that word which the king has spoken over your life, over the kingdom, for, uh, for that to become an experience in your life. You understand? When he said when, the, when God wants to do something, he speaks his word. He, sp he speaks parables. He reveals uh, the mysteries. And when he speaks those mysteries and we are able to understand those mysteries, what happens? Those mysteries do what in our life? Causes us to repent, causes us to change, transforms our lives. It brings healing, deliverance. Okay, so here he's saying that Satan wants to stop us from experiencing the word of God that has gone out from the king or the word that the king has sent. He stops it from becoming the plan and the purpose for which God has sent it into our lives. You're able to understand now. Okay, so he's saying what will allow Satan to rob you of the word of the kingdom that the king has spoken. He says that when anyone's heart, you know, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then he says Satan comes and takes away the word. So what robs you? The word goes out from the king. But what robs you from experiencing that word or that word coming to purpose in your life? Look at your Bible. What does it say? You don't understand it. You don't understand it. So here it says, anyone who hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then Satan comes and takes away. Now, when you don't understand what God is saying, then you don't get a revelation of the truth of what his word has gone out for. Or you don't understand the revelation of what God is saying and you risk losing that word and that word will not produce in your life that is why you and i need to pray like the psalmist says god open my eyes to the wondrous to behold the wondrous things in your word okay the psalmist says god open my eyes to look at the wondrous things in your word meaning the psalmist is saying god help me to go past the letters just a normal reading I don't want to just read face value. See, I want to see, I want to get a deeper understanding. I want to know the mysteries that you're trying to reveal or the truths of your kingdom or about yourself in that word. Because we all can read God's word, okay? But just reading does not ensure that it will produce. But when you read, you need to read with an understanding. And also you need to pray and say, God, give me an understanding and the revelation of the truth in your word okay reveal the wondrous things in your word reveal the revelation to me so what is god jesus saying hey the the word of the of the king is going out but if you don't understand what is going to happen satan has the freedom to do what to come and take away whatever is so so that is why some of us Say, God, I'm praying, I'm praying, you're not giving me answers. But God is saying, hey, I'm showing you for my word, man. But you're not trying to understand. I'm trying to speak to the pastor on Sunday. You're not trying to understand. You're so tired, you're so sleepy, you're thinking, what should I eat after church is over? What is for lunch? Where can I go out? What biryani? So many biryani options we have. Which restaurant? You know? Or, uh, my, oh, I'm listening to pastor, but my stomach is growling. I'm feeling so hungry, you know. Uh, or, you know, you're thinking about the fight you had with your spouse or what, how your child irritated you. And God is saying, man, I'm speaking to you. You're not able to listen. You're not able to understand. That is why many times say God, we, people say God does not speak to us. But God is saying, I'm speaking to you. You are not able to understand. You're saying, I'm reading God's word, but I am not able to see how Pastor Ashish is preaching. I am also preaching, but I'm not able to preach like him. 
God is saying, I'm showing, but you're not trying to understand. So what happens when we don't understand what is Jesus saying? Satan is already there to come and take away the seed. He's then he's saying, oh, you can go to this biryani place. There's a new shop open, new restaurant open, nice Chinese, nice biryani. Go there, go here. Oh, I read this. The, uh, the Satan will say, you remember the newspaper advertisement you read, saw that day? Go to that restaurant, try it out. So the word of God is colors, taken away from you. Okay. So you and I need to pray, say, God, give me eyes that I can see. God, give, when I read your word, please open my eyes to see, not just to see what is there, you know, the word, just go beyond that, to see the deeper truths, what you're trying to say. Hear what I can hear or need to hear and my heart to understand what you are trying to tell me. God tries to tell us, but we are not willing to listen and understand. Please use the mic. All of you with me? Yes, enjoying the class? Yes, ma'am. Mm. No, it's a simple question. Like uh, when, uh, let us say, two preachers are preaching God's word. Okay, they preach from the same word. Okay, let us say, for example, Psalm 23. Now, one preacher will preach, the other preacher also will preach. Now, one person's word exposition and the preaching will be in depth, something that we would have read, but it would have like hit us in a way that it has never uh, you know reached us and the other preachers uh, word i'm not comparing I'm just telling other preachers word is something we already know or just a little on the surface so there uh, is it the preachers thing that you know he has not gone into the word or uh, uh, extracted more from that passage or is it the holy spirit's revelation accordingly has arisen you answer that question. You know the answer. You tell me. No, the reason I'm asking this is... No, you tell uh, me first answer that, then you give okay. me the reason. To be yeah. uh, uh, honest, it's the person's uh, uh, either uh, willingness or the time or the effort or the interest Yes, support. the time, the effort. Say, God, I'm preaching this word to your people. Huh. I want to give them fresh pasture. Revelation and things. Fresh revelation, not stale. Not something which are taken off from Google. Correct, correct. The, correct. You know, other person's sermon. Something fresh. Speak to me. God will take you from scripture passage to scripture passage to scripture passage to show you. I prepared sermons like that when I have seen. And I was like, where did I get this point from? How did I know this? It's just the Holy Spirit taking you from one scripture passage to another. And I, said, I didn't even know this. How did I put this in my sermon? You know, it's just the Holy Spirit. Yes. And for the second person who's not given that uh, extraction thing. so That time uh, and that effort. Huh, so is that it that Holy Spirit has not revealed certain things? Not that the Holy Spirit doesn't want to reveal. The Holy Spirit wants to reveal, but the person is not taking that time and the effort, that enthusiasm and that thing, God, like here, God, open my eyes to see. Give me fresh revelation. Show me wondrous things that I can speak and teach your people. Yes. Yes. So some people, when they... When I listen to, uh, I listen to one man of God who I greatly follow and it's like, wow, what revelation. I mean, it's not that the Holy Spirit doesn't want to give the revelation to me or to others. It's just that this man of God just soaks in that presence of God. You just know he's soaking because you just can see you, 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 you're not in his congregation listening to sermon, listening online miles apart. But you can just see his love for God, love for his people, love for his church, love for the word of God. Just amazing truths and revelations like, wow, you know, it's like, so that is why those who are, have given more, they will receive in abundance because you're seeking for more. But those who are being given little and they're not doing anything with that little, that also little will be taken away from them. That is what is the basis for this. Yes, Gertrude, you had your hand up? Uh, no, sister, it was by mistake. Okay, no worries. Anyone else had any question? Okay, so the next one, what is the next thing that in this parable Jesus says will choke his word or stop his word or hinder his word that comes into our life? What is the second one? Look at your parable, my... Look at your parable. What is the second one? Matthew chapter 13. First one is the birds of the air. The second one? The stony ground. Ah, rocks, stony ground. Okay. So the rocks that are 
uh, there that will be a hindrance okay so what are these rocks so jesus is saying hey now when the word comes the king sends out his word it comes into your life but there are rocks in your life that will hinder the word of the king that coming to pass in your life okay so today the king might be speaking to you the word of the kingdom might be coming to you okay it might be coming to you from the written word it can be a prophetic word it can be the holy spirit speaking into your life so the the word of god is coming into your life but there are rocks that are hindering you from this word being fulfilled so what are these rocks what look at what the word of god says what are these rocks matthew chapter 13 sorry distraction distraction sister okay it can be persecution can be hardship yes it can be afflictions of this world for uh, for the word's sake okay so meaning that you know you go through persecution difficulties uh, 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 afflictions hardships okay uh, which can rob the word that the king has spoken in your life now if you allow all of these to affect your life it will rob the word that the king has spoken and that word will become ineffective yes we all go through persecutions we all go through afflictions we all go through hardships but it's important for us to say god i'm feeling overwhelmed i'm feeling burdened i'm feeling you know drained out by this problem but i want to just say lay it aside because i want to hear what you are trying to say so when we lay it aside when we hear god he'll give us strategies for warfare what we need to do and how we can overcome these things okay so he says if you allow these things to affect you it will rob that word that is coming into your life and that word will become ineffective okay so there's nothing wrong with the word that the king sends because it's the word of the king amen and the word of the king is full of power the word of the king will come to pass because god says whatever goes out from my mouth it will not return to me void and it's the incorruptible word of god which lives and abides forevermore amen that is the word of god that is a word that is coming into your life into your situations for the kingdom of god okay but there if there are rocks in your life if there are afflictions challenges difficulties in your life and around you it can cause that word to not produce in your life yes get rude sister i have a question mm -hmm. now these afflictions hindrances come in your life i mean it is not your fault that this come so how to overcome uh, these afflictions that uh, you know you don't lose god blessing because not everybody can go through it okay afflictions come not just because of other people not just because we live in a fallen and a corrupt world afflictions also come because sometimes of our own choices our sin and our misdoings but what are, what do you do when afflictions come because of the world you're living in a corrupt world fallen world or because of other people what do you do what do you do you get disturbed yes distracted but what can you do what can you Pray do about it what should you do yes you pray about it god has given us everything that we need for life and god godliness yeah. god has given us his word his word is life his word is hope his word is encouragement so you take those promises in the word you speak it over your life, life. and what else you do you you don't lose out on the kingdom culture you forgive that person let go you do your work god will you know get you to that place where he wants to get you god will move things accelerate things in your life you don't fight people you don't because you know it's satan who is using them to bring about these afflictions yes afflictions are there jesus says we will go through persecution difficulties and all of that but he says but he does not say that you cannot do anything about it you know or there's nothing that you can do you have to drown in that he does not say that but he says you know he has given us everything for life and godliness he's given us his word he has given us um, the holy spirit the holy spirit will speak to us 
encourage us, strengthen us, give us the strategies. He has given us uh, the weapons for our warfare that we can speak. He has given us uh, the weapon of prayer, worship, the promises in this, in this word that we can speak over our lives. And all of these things can help us to overcome those challenges. So even when we go through those challenges and difficulties, we will go through the rivers or the like the ocean-like experience, but it will not overtake us. It will not drown us. Um, uh, you know, the waters will not rise over us, sweep over us. We'll walk through the fire, but it will not burn us because God is with us. He will give okay. us the strength. We, were, we are more than overcomers because we are in Christ Jesus and he gives us the strength and he enables us. But if we give up, give in, you know, just we can drown in those miseries and those miseries can overtake us and even Satan can use us to kill our, you know, joy, peace. Because he's, he's, uh, he's the one who uh, is all out to steal, kill, and destroy our lives. Yes. Thank you, sister. Thank you, Gertrude. What is the next um, hindrance for making the word ineffective? Huh? Birds of the air, rocks, and then? What is the third one? Thorns. Yes, thorns. So Jesus said, hey, listen, there are things called thorns. And what are these thorns? The cares of the world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust for other things. And he says, Jesus says, hey, if you allow them, they can slowly come into your life like a creeper. You know what a creeper does? You've seen creepers on these big trees. They creep uh, on those big trees and they can actually sap that tree from all of its strength and energy because it's drawing strength for itself. And that main tree can even, uh, you know, the main plant can even die. So he's saying that, you know, these things that creep into your life, creep means come slowly. You know, the small opening it can come and can hinder the work of the word of the king to be fulfilled in your life. Okay. And then finally he said, you know, for the word to come on the good ground, which is your heart, what is the condition of your heart? What should be the condition of your heart? The one who hears and one who sees and one who understands. That means you receive the word, you retain the word. How do you retain the word? You receive the word, but how does that word retain? Keep. How do you keep that word in your life? Meditate upon it. Meditate, understand, believe on that word, and then that word can bring fruit. It can bring fruit 30, 60, and 100 fold. Okay. So he's saying this is the word, this is the, the, the kingdom where every word is designed to produce in your life. But you have to be careful of the birds, the rock, and the thorns because they have the potential to hinder the word of the king from being fulfilled in your life. Okay? And Jesus says something important. Look at that parable. You know, Jesus says something. I don't know which verse that is. He says, if you understand this parable, then you can. Verse 23. What does he say? If you understand this parable, no, no, after that, if you can understand this parable which I'm telling you, what will happen? You'll bear fruit. Bear fruit. You'll bear fruit, yes, Under but there's something else. In more measures. In, in more measure, you. yeah, but in another context, he says, if you understand this parable, then he says you can understand all other parables. Okay? Meaning, he's saying, if you understand that this natural story from your world is communicating a truth, a mystery, and you take this word seriously, and you know that you're able to understand all other parables that I'm going to tell you. Okay, are you able to understand? Okay, so you're saying if you take this parable, which I'm telling you, the story from your world, you take it seriously, you're able to understand it, then you will be able to understand all other parables. So what is Jesus saying? He's saying, hey, you need to take my words very, very seriously. So when you read the Bible, take it seriously because it is the word of the king of the 
kingdom. Amen? Any questions? Any doubts? No? We we'll all understood the mysteries. <laughs> okay, or it's still a mystery to you. <laughs> okay, thank you everyone for joining class. Have a blessed day ahead. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you.